Let's look at our next unit now, and it's going to deal with exponents and logarithms. And logarithms are going to be new, but we first have to understand how to simplify and solve exponential equations and expressions. So this study of exponents is important for logarithms, and it's very important we know the exponent laws. So let's just do a quick review of the laws for exponents. X to the zero, any base with a zero is always going to be one. When we have x to the m times n, remember exponent on the inside, exponent on the outside, we would multiply those exponents. If we have x over y to the negative m, remember we can do two things here. We could take our expression and write negative m on each of those values, or we could actually take our fraction and write the reciprocal of that, with the m and then the m could go in if needed some easier ones here base is the same we want to add our exponents x to the m times x to the n is x to the m plus n same thing over here that we've already done the m just goes in to both of these values if we have x to the 1 over n remember we have a rational exponent that's where we would need to change it to a radical. And when we change it to a radical, the denominator becomes the root in the radical. And that would just be the nth root of x. All right, last three here, x to the m over x to the n. Well, we subtract our exponents in this case. If we have a negative exponent, remember we can get rid of our negative exponents by taking the reciprocal of that value. And an important thing to note here is when we have x plus or minus y all to the m, whatever is inside that bracket, whatever that binomial is, it is not equal to x to the m plus or minus y to the m. The m does not multiply in, does not distribute in. So we don't want to do that distribution it is not equal to that, and that is very, very important. They are not equal to this. So we're going to use our exponent laws, and we've used them already throughout this course. We're going to use them to simplify and solve an expression. But to simplify, what we have to first do is create a common base for the expression. And once we have a common base, then we use all our rules for exponents. So let's look at an easy one here. 4 to the 2x times 8 to the 3 minus x. When what we want to be looking for is a common base between 4 and 8. And it's pretty easy to see base 2, so we could write 4 as 2 squared. Now that would still have the original exponent that's on the 4, the 2 to the x. And we can write 8 as 2 cubed. Again, keeping the original exponent on the 8 as 3 minus x. And now our bases are the same. They are both in base 2. Well, now we use our rule for exponents to simplify. 2 is going to be our base. We multiply these exponents and get 4x times our base of 2, which would give us 9 minus 3x. And at this point, now we have the base the same. We are multiplying values that have the same base, so we would add the exponents. So we'll get 4x plus 9 minus 3x, and our simplified expression would just be 2 to the x plus 9. There is our common base and our exponent, x plus 9. Well, let's try one a little more complex. We see 9s, 3s, and 27s, and we want to find a base that would work for all three of these values. We usually go to a small number, and yes, it is base 3. And remember, it's base 3 because 3 squared is 9, and 3 cubed is 27. We can divide 3 evenly into those values. Well, let's go through and do our expression. So we'll get 3 squared, I'm just going to put some brackets around it, to the x minus 3, and all of that is still in the brackets, q 
cubed. Lots of exponents there, but we'll deal with those later. And then we're going to multiply that by 3 to the 2x, all over 27 is 3 cubed to the x minus 5. Now that puts it all in base 3. From here, now we can simplify our expression. So let's look at our exponents up here. We have brackets and multiple brackets, so we're going to multiply these exponents together. So I'm going to do it in two steps here. We'll get 3 to the 2x minus 6, and all of that is cubed, times 3 to the 2x over 3 to the 3x minus 15. And we're almost there, so we'll take 3. Now we got to multiply the exponents one more time to the 6x minus 18 times 3 to the 2x. Again, still over that 3 to the 3x minus 15. Now we're almost got this simplified. But at this point, now work with just the numerator. We can use our rules for exponents to base the same. We would add them together. 6x minus 18 plus 2x. Again, still over that 3x minus 15. And this will simplify our numerator to 3 to the 8x minus 18 over 3 to the 3x minus 15. Now we're at down to base 3 with a single numerator and single denominator. And now we have to think about what's our rule when the base is the same and we have two exponents, we must subtract. And so I'm going to take the subtraction and actually do it up here because this is where we have to be careful. We're doing 8x minus 18 minus 3x minus 15. And that negative is very important because we're going to, when we distribute that in, get 8x minus 18 minus 3x plus 15, and we're left with 5x minus 3, and 5x minus 3 is our final exponent, just like that. And there is our expression simplified down to a single base with a single exponent that has variables, and we'll deal with that a little bit later. Well, that's an expression. What about an equation? And to solve an exponential equation, it's a very similar process. We still want to simplify our equation. Try and get the entire equation down to a single base, like we did with expressions. Only once we have our equation down to a single base, then we are going to use this idea that a single base to some exponent m, if it's equal to a single base, and that same single base of x to the n, then the exponents must equal. And that's the important piece we're going to look at when we get through this example. The exponents must equal. Now what we have to keep in mind is our base is never 1, negative 1, or 0. It doesn't work for exponents. So we're just going to get common bases that are not negative 1, 0, or 1, and then once the bases are the same, set the exponents equal to each other. Well, what does that mean? Here's our question. And let's take this question and we want to write everything in the same base. And again, we're going to see these numbers all the time. We want to write this in base 2. So 4 is the same as 2 squared. And again, we keep the original exponent that was on the 4. And 8 is the same as 2 cubed. Let's keep that original exponent that was on the 8, and there it is in base 2. Now we use our rules for exponents. Multiply our exponents together, we get 2 to the 6 minus 2x, and on the other side we get 2 to the 3x plus 3. And at this point, now the bases are the same. And if the bases are the same, 
that tells us that these two exponents must also be the same. So what we can do now is take our exponential equation and just solve a pretty simple algebraic equation. The exponent on the left of 6 minus 2x must equal the exponent on the right of 3x plus 3. And from here, we can just do the algebra and find the value for x. So let's just move this 3 over and the 2x to the other side, making it plus. And then, again, pretty simple algebra. We get 3 equals 5x. And so our x is 3 fifths. And that's our value for x. So let's try one a little more complex. Well, here is our equation, and we see 9s and 27s and 81s. And we can see that they all are divisible by 3. We can write everything in base 3. So let's do that. Let's write everything in base 3. The first will not change because it's already in base 3. We're going to take 3 squared is the same as 9. Let's use those brackets. We'll get x minus 1, and all of that is squared. Over 3 cubed. Again, I'm going to throw that in brackets. x minus 3. That's in brackets, all to the 4 is equal to 3 to the 4, all to the exponent 5. So just changing 9 to 3 squared, 27 to 3 cubed, and 81 to 3 to the 4. Well, let's clean this up a little bit. We'll get 3 to the 6x multiplied by 3, and as we get better, we can notice that these are going to all multiply together. All the exponents are going to multiply together. So a quick way to do this is just multiply the two numbers together, which gives us 4, and that 4 will just multiply by the x minus 1, and we'll get 4x minus 4. Same thing down here. Notice we have a 3 and a 4. Those will just become 12, and then we're just multiplying 12 by x minus 3, and we'll get 3 to the 12x minus 36, which is all equal to 3 to the 20. Multiply them together. Well, we're getting close, but not quite there, so let's simplify the numerator here. This will give us 3, add these exponents together, 10x minus 4 over 3 to the 12x minus 36, and that's all 3 to the 20. Again, we want to subtract our exponents, so let's just do this over here. 10x minus 4 minus 12x minus 36. That's going to give us 10x minus 4 minus 12x plus 36, and in the end, we're going to get a exponent of negative 2x plus 32. So we can take this equation, and we'll get 3 to the negative 2x plus 32 is equal to 3 to the 20. And all of that work gets us down to an equation where we can now set the two exponents equal to one another. Negative 2x plus 32 is equal to 20. So that means negative 2x is equal to negative 12. And that, of course, tells us that x is equal to 6. And that's how we can solve for x when it is in the exponent of an equation. And we're going to do a number of examples like this in class.